A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who is the liar? Whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Whoever denies the Father and the Son, this is the Antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son does not have the Father. But whoever confesses the Son has the Father as well. Let what you heard from the beginning remain in you. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made us, eternal life. I write you these things about those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you received from him remains in you, so that you do not need anyone to teach you. But his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and not false. Just as it is taught you, remain in him. And now, children, remain in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be put to shame by him at his coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All, All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you, so that we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with the water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. The whole of the first letter of St. John, from which our first reading excerpt comes today, is really a meditation on the reality of the Incarnation. And so, what I wanted to do, and the reason I chose the hymn that I did, was I wanted, to, for the bit of the homily, to unpack the first verse of that hymn. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be. In other words, the source of the Son of God is the Father's love from beyond creation, from, from before creation. 
He's not part of creation. He is eternal God with God. Okay, so before the world began to be, he is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end, the source and the ending he of all things that are, that have been, and that the future may see. So all things come together in him. All things come together in him. It's a reflection in many ways also of one of the great canticles that you can read in the letter to the Colossians. And so we can see that all these kind of things are true. All things are held together in him. We see that writing also in the letter to the Ephesians. This is important for our faith. It's also important for the feast day that we celebrate today because Basil and his friend Gregory Nazianzen were both great defenders of the truth of the incarnation. We would think wrongly that the Council of Nicaea, which defined the divinity of Jesus, would have settled all the divisions. Wrong. Did not happen. Did not happen. And for several hundred years afterward, the alternative view, the Arian view, was very dominant, including in the imperial court of Constantinople, which is where Basil and Gregory would get into trouble, because the court there started leaning in favor of the Arian bishops. And so it was a great challenge for Basil and for his brother, Gregory of Nyssa, and for his friend, Gregory Nazianzen, to be able to hold the faith. But they did. And they were not afraid to proclaim the faith. So for us today, the great truth of the reality of Jesus Christ for us is important for us to hold on to. We know the price that is paid, but we know the truth of the incarnation. And that's what's important for us today. The truth of the incarnation, the same truth that is the truth of the presence in the Eucharist that we have and that we celebrate. So as we remember these two great doctors of the Eastern Church today, may in fact our faith also live the incarnation. Let our own bodies be incarnate presences of Jesus for others. Let us stand and pray.